Want to learn how all these YouTubers are creating these fancy whiteboard animations? Well then, you've come to the right place. I'm not just going to show you what we use. It's VideoScribe, by the way. I'll also walk you through step by step on how the video process goes by making a whiteboard animation in one day. Here's what you'll need before we get started. If you want to do this in one day like I am, you'll need number one, plenty of energy for focus. Two, about 10 hours. Three, a pretty good idea of what you want to talk about for your video. Four, $29. Five, lastly, you'll need to subscribe to my channel. Yep, you know, subscribe that button right there. This is pretty much all you need to succeed. Make sure you do the last step. It's probably the most important. All right, first things first, let's go get the whiteboard animation software. You can Google VideoScribe or go to videoscribe.co. By the way, I'm not sponsored or paid by this company at all. It just happens to be the software I use. Let's not waste any time with the free trial, which limits you to poor quality video and has a watermark. You can go for the 29 a month or the 144 for a year, if you plan on using it throughout the year. I personally did the 144 because I knew I'd be using it a lot. With that downloaded, we have everything we need to make this whiteboard animation. Let's begin at the first step of video creation, organizing your ideas. Keep in mind that this is how I personally do things at the moment. Okay, you're gonna need a lot of focus, so put your phone out of sight. Choose your workstation wisely, and prepare for some hard work. So we start with our main idea, fleshing it out and outlining what we want to talk about by writing it all down. Yes, observe my really crappy handwriting. I like coming up with the title ahead of time, so my video has a focus point. After I finish my outline, I begin scripting by using Google Sheets. I keep to a pretty simple structure of what I'm going to say on one side, and a rough idea of what the visuals are on the other side. Sometimes I imagine what I'm seeing for the animation while scripting, but other times it's easier to do the voiceover first, and then decide on what you see based off of the timing and how you set it. If you've never done a voiceover before, I suggest you wait until after to fill in the visuals, which is what I'm going to do. I usually just write down whatever comes to mind as a first draft and then I come back and revise it afterwards. One of the best ways to revise your script is to simply say it out loud and see if it sounds okay. All right, the script is done. Now, let's head to my sound studio downstairs. Check it out guys, my sound station. The next step is super simple. Just record yourself using a recording device while reading the script. Mine's is a blue Yeti mic. If you don't have a very good mic, just use your phone. If getting a Yeti mic is out of the question, there are some cheap mics you can find on Amazon that connect to your phone. I record using Audition, but any digital audio workstation works perfectly fine. A tip for voice recordings. Usually your first time reading off the script is going to suck, so don't be afraid of judging your own voice and repeating the lines until you feel satisfied. I know early on I cringed every time I heard my own voice, but you get used to it. For a one day video, I highly recommend you keep it under 4 minutes, unless you have the entire data. Here we are guys, the part you've been waiting for. The absolute longest part of the entire process. The whiteboard animation. If you're still on the same day, you've done some major good work. I usually split what was just done with the final part into two days. But for this video, let's finish it. All right, let's open VideoScribe and sign in. Click create a new scribe and here we are. I actually managed to figure this out and start making my first principles video the first day I downloaded it. So you guys can do it too, especially since you're watching this video. Here's how it works. We can add text or images using this corner of buttons over here. We click the play from beginning button and then a pre-recorded hand just pops in to draw it for us. I don't know what people consider this, whether it's legit whiteboard animation, blah, blah, blah. I don't really care as long as it serves my purpose and my purpose is to give information to you guys with good supplemental visuals. And I thought this was a good place to start. Okay, back to the instructions. Another option is to pick a spot to start the video from. You can move the object order around and copy and paste them. Let's get into the options and check out the properties of this object. You can change the rotation, mirror it, and change the drawing options. Sometimes it's cooler if it swoops in without the hand there. For text, you can change the color. Probably the most important options are drawing time, pause time, and transition time. Drawing time is the duration for how long the hand draws it for, or how long it swoops in for. Pause time is the duration between after the drawing finishes and the transition. Transition is the time it takes for the camera to move between objects. Let's go ahead and leave this scribe for a second to go to the options. Most of the time, it'll look best when there's a small amount of pause time and transition time. So let's go ahead and zero out the pause time 
and do 0.5 seconds for the transition time. Okay, cool. Let's go back into the scribe. So there are a couple other options for the paper, such as different color. Let's go ahead and make this video blue since it's my favorite color. And here is the option to add the voiceover. For the voiceover, you just click this button over here and then go look for it inside your finder. Once that's added, we can go back to our visual notes. Or if we want to freestyle scribe, that works too. You can also grab photos from online by finding it online and pasting the URL. Another important element of the scribe is the camera view. The describe will default to zooming into an object if you don't set a camera position. I recommend you always set a camera position because honestly, I just think it looks better. Awesome. That was a lot of information, but it's actually pretty intuitive and you get the hang of it pretty quickly. Now let's build this thing. Okay, so the idea is to always keep the visuals as interactive as possible. This means that there's no long pauses between visual movement. No longer than about three to four seconds is a good rule to try to follow. There is a consequence to high density animation though. The higher the density, the longer it's gonna take. I average about 40 minutes to one hour of working in VideoScribe for every minute of video. A beginner might average closer to one hour to 80 minutes for every minute of video. So be prepared to sit for a very, very long time. I like doing handstands while I take breaks. It really gets the blood flowing to the head, if you know what I mean. So a few tips while I do this. If you're going for a really logical, organized video, I suggest you do things in sort of like box formation. So you think of it as you have this one frame and then you're adding a lot of information to this one frame. That's what I'm mostly doing for this video. You can see from the scribe that if you zoom out, there's basically four to five sections where I transition between ideas. If you're trying to connect ideas, you might want a more fluid interactive approach. Maybe create a linear path or a shape and have the camera move to complement what you're trying to say. If you repeat an idea, it's easier to just have the camera pan back to that already created scribe versus making a brand new one. It'll save some time. Here's the technique for panning. You create a blank object and set the camera position to where you want it to look. And then you make sure you adjust the transition time to a higher number of seconds. Make sure you're playing the video back sometimes to make sure that everything looks good. Here we have it guys, the near finished product. You can add some music using this button over here. After that, it's best to watch through everything at least once to spell check and make sure timing is solid. Now, we press this button over here to render this thing. I personally set my scribe videos to 1080p and 25fps. Choose a folder, and finally, we are done. It takes a while to render depending on the length of the video, so we gotta be patient. As a bonus, this is what I usually do with the video afterwards. I take it to Premiere Pro, kill the audio, and then add the original audio back. After that, I add a small vignette using Lumetri Color. Then I adjust the sounds to the right levels, and then export the video. And lastly, I schedule the upload. Well, that's it guys. Thanks so much for sticking through the entire video. Making this whiteboard animation in a single day took a lot of energy, but I hope that the video can help you do the same. If not in one day, at least a complete and good whiteboard animation. This is the first video of a series that I call the Creator Tools series. I started this series because I believe people oftentimes have ideas for projects, but don't know about the tools or how to use them. Or they think it's too difficult to learn how to use them, so they never start. I'm here to help by making these videos, showing you step by step how to finish the projects that you guys have in mind. Let me know in the comments what you might like to see from this series, and consider liking and subscribing if the video helped you out. See you guys next time.